Welcome back to Lee's Lately. Before we get into this video, if you could just hit that button down below, that would really help me out because we're trying to go for 10K next. Today's video though is going to be a news update video because there's been plenty happening in the world of Leeds United. A little bit of a departure from our scouting videos, but you'll get another one again tomorrow. So first thing we want to talk about is the fact that Cody Drama apparently has agreed or is going to agree a deal to go to Hull City. Um, Given the interest that he had from abroad, apparently, from Dortmund and PSG and whoever whoever it was linked with over the last couple of years, uh, crazy moves, uh, it is going to end up being Hull City. So good luck to him there. Hopefully he does everything he didn't do at Leeds United because when he was at Leeds, he never really lived up to expectations. But when he was at um, Cardiff on loan and things like that. He, he always did seem to have a good season and Luton as well was one of his good seasons. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he does there, but I don't think he was someone that Leeds really needed anymore, especially with the signing of Jaden Bogle. Um, the second one is over the course of this week, there's been a few links for Crescencio Somerville to leave Leeds United, one of them being to West Ham and one of them being to Roma. Now, Roma couldn't afford to buy him outright. I think they'd offered like 20 million euros or something like that. And then if not on loan, they can't afford him at that price. Um, and they're not the richest club in the world at the moment. So I don't think they'd be able to get him. And I don't think there's any way that Leeds would let him go for that cheap. West Ham, however, um, they would have the money to do the deal, I would imagine. But at the moment they are falling way short of Leeds's asking price. And because Leeds have sold Glenn Kamara and Archie Gray, Leeds now stand themselves in a very, very good position to be able to basically say no to anything that's not the right price for them. So what is going to happen is when you see clubs coming in to try and buy our players, Leeds are going to basically say you either pay the price that we're asking or you don't get the player at all. So it'd be interesting to see how much the 49ers hold their nerve over the next couple of weeks with these players uh, and see if... If we're going to get money, we're going to get the right amount of money. Um, Nonto to Everton still seems like it's um, fizzing around somewhere. Um, Amadou Onana, who was at Everton and played really well for Belgium during the Euros and has played for well for Everton over the last couple of years, has now signed for Aston Villa for about 50 million quid. So that then does give Everton a few, a few million to spend on who they want to bring in. Now, they are bringing in um, a player from Napoli for around 20 million, but that does not mean to say that they won't still be trying to bring in Wilfred Nonto for around 20, 25 million pounds as well. So look out for that one because Everton may be coming sniffing around Nonto again before too long. Um, some other things as well, the captaincy change. Now, Daniel Farker has announced a new leadership group um, and that is going to be two vice captains. So the vice captains are now Pascal Strauch and Ilan Melier, which I think is a good thing um, to have really. Your goalkeeper being one of your vice captains and one of your centre-backs being one of your other vice captains. They can see the whole pitch, they can communicate well um, and hopefully it will bring up that kind of level of responsibility with those players as well. Um, obviously Melier and Strauch, whilst experienced in this side they are both very very young um, and so hopefully that will kind of bring them up as well and speaking of young the actual new club captain Ethan Ampadu is um, also a player who is not vastly experienced in years but very experienced in the amount of games that he's played and Ethan Ampadu I think over the course of last season since we signed him has proved that he would be a very very good club captain of course Liam Cooper end of an era is losing his captaincy but we are expecting him to be on the way out anyway now um, so it'll be interesting to see how Ethan Ampadu takes to this role I know he was captain for most of last season on the pitch but to be club captain as well means something a little bit more there's some more responsibilities that go with it I know when I've listened to football podcasts they've talked about how a lot of the time the club captain has to sort out extra tickets for players families and all these little extra organizational things that you don't think about with being a club captain but the main responsibility is being that leader leading Leeds United out onto the pitch and to be honest when you go through the squad I couldn't imagine anyone much better than Ethan Ampadu to do that his performances last season were exemplary. He was always up to the task, always performed at least a 7 or an 8 out of 10, Mr. Consistent. So congratulations to Ethan Ampadu. And 
long may he uh, have that captaincy role at Leeds United because I think he's absolutely deserved it, even though he's only been here for one season. Another thing then, uh, in recent days and hours, Leeds were linked with moves for Sammy Schmodix from um, Blackburn, who obviously scored 20-odd goals last season um, from that number 10 role, and also Harrison Burrows, who's just been promoted with Peterborough, who can play left-back or in midfield as well. Now, I made a video this January just gone, about Harrison Burrows and said that I'd love for us to sign him. Sammy Schmodix has scored a load of goals last season. So whilst it looked on paper like they'd be really good signings, um, it has now been kind of debunked, those links. And um, I think it's Joe Donoghue of the YEP. He basically said, look, those two aren't really even on the list. They're obviously good players but apparently they're not really even on the list and they're not really people we're actually looking at. So it's one of those things where you go, oh yeah, this did actually stand out a little bit from the other moves and transfers that we've made in that we have been moving in silence before this. The 49ers don't put out those links into the world. They don't just say, oh, we're going to sign this player or whatever. They don't leak that out. So with Joe Rothwell, with Jaden Bogle, it was only a matter of days before they were signed after they were um, after they were first mentioned. So it'll be interesting to see how the 49ers move in the rest of the window because they are going to have to make some signings fairly soon um, to fill some other positions as well. Where I think we probably need an extra centre-back because I'd imagine that Max Verb is going to be going and I'd imagine that we potentially need another winger if we are going to lose somebody like Nonto or Somerville or both. Um, we definitely need another winger then. So just kind of waiting to see what happens on those ones. The other big bit of news is the away kit was finally released. Now, there has been adverts and billboards around Leeds and around Ellen Road with the bright yellow, the colour code, the um, smiley badge. Some of these things have been kind of hinted at and there's been a little bit of a marketing campaign for this. The kit has now been released and you can see it on the screen. Um, according to a lot of Leeds fans, it's one of the nicest kits Leeds have ever produced. It's a, a homage to kits of the past into a specific kit, actually. Um, and... It'll be interesting to see how this one sells because I think it's probably going to be one of the best selling kits of all time. They've also released a kind of like long sleeve polo with the Trefoil Adidas logo and the smiley badge on it that's white that looks incredible. Um, proper like retro style um, football shirt and... Of course, the kit itself is really nice. It's yellow. We've wanted a yellow away kit for so long. We've got one with the old smiley badge. Um, and yeah, it looks great. People are saying, why does the blue stripes on the shoulder have a bit of white between them? But that is because it is also paying homage to that old kit that had a little bit of white on the blue stripe down the arm. So um, yeah, I think that one was, was online at 10 o'clock today is, is being uh put on sale so um go and look at it because yeah it's it's looks really really good a proper leads away kit so that has been a little bit of a news update um leads are playing of course a couple of pre-season friendlies in germany i'm going to see if we can somehow get that live um although the club have said that they are only being played afterwards so th th there will be some sort of content around it whether it's a live stream if i can actually get it or just some analysis um, for the videos. Uh, so plenty to uh, to stay subscribed for, plenty to hit that notification bell for, so you don't miss an upload. Thanks for watching Leeds lately though, and I'll see you in the next one.